Hello. This particular yin yoga sequence has a more restorative tone to it, which means instead of going to an extreme intense edge, it might be more useful to maintain a barely perceptible edge, which might make it more challenging here. So postures in the sequence will include Sphinx pose, a prone half frog pose, and then banana pose, cattail pose, and finally, Shavasana. So, props that might be useful. If you have a yoga bolster, a yoga bolster definitely might help during this practice, but blankets, pillows, anything that helps to soften sharp pressure points, particularly useful. Also blocks or books, if you don't have a yoga blocks, might be handy. And even a strap, even a strap could be handy. So maybe gather up some props and we'll get started. So the practice begins in a comfortable, accessible, stable seat on the ground, on the floor. It can be cross-legged and it could be cross-legged sitting on some comfortable props, or I'm going to recommend sitting back on one heels. So knees fairly close together. You can either sit back on your heels or in between your heels. For some of us, neither one will happen. And so you can maybe fix that with a yoga prop. So you can dig a block on, the, on whatever setting works, maybe the medium setting, and you place it underneath your sits bones in between your heels. And maybe that's up high enough so that your knees and your ankles are not comfortable. If not, then it probably just means, okay, you'll have to find another way to sit. But you want your torso to be open for these opening breathing exercises and warm-ups before we get into the long-held yin postures. We'll start with four, what I call clearing breaths. We'll do four of them. So, again, take your time and de be deliberate about your seat so that it does feel stable. Torso feels nice, long, and open. So you might have to like maybe roll your shoulders back a little bit and create a nice neutral spine by feel like, feeling like you're lengthening your spine. After your next exhale, first big inhale. So as you inhale, inhale and feel like you're really filling up your entire torso. You're, you're kind of growing yourself bigger. You can even shrug your shoulders all the way up towards your ears. And then when you exhale, make it a big giant, just dramatic release. Release everything here and allow your mind to release the troubles and the tensions and the stresses of the day. Dedicate this time to being in the present moment. We'll do a, we'll do a few more of these. So nice, big, giant, feeling inhale and, you know, kind of over dramatize it, kind of shrink your body up at the end of the inhale and then exhale soft and release, let everything just kind of relax. So a couple more of these at your own pace. And remember nice big gigantic inhales and then soft dramatic releases of exhales. Maybe one more. And exhale one final time. And if you had your eyes closed, maybe this is a good time to notice if there's tension still in your face and go ahead and see if you can work that tension out. We'll do a little, um, we'll do a little bit of neck rolling here. So if you've kind of gotten into a slouch position, roll your spine long again here, maybe roll your shoulders back and then very gently tuck your chin towards your sternum until it stops. And then very gently roll your head over to one side, over one shoulder, slowly and gently roll it back and then slowly and gently over the other shoulder and then maybe continue to do this for a few breaths and notice if there's any extreme tension that crops up in either the neck or the upper shoulders here and that's the idea is to just notice that maybe send some breath there if it's okay with your neck and your head you can make full circles so the next time you're over one shoulder if you want to, you can keep going and roll your head back all the way around and then 
Come back to center. Maybe make a couple circles. But if you made a couple circles in one direction, go ahead and make them in the other direction. And the idea to this exercise is to notice is as you're doing this slowly, you notice if there's somewhere in the circle that crops up some, some, some very noticeable tension. And you can allow yourself to pause there, take some extra breaths there. But when your sternum, when your, when your chin does return to your sternum, go ahead and stop and then lift your gaze here. And while we're here, might as well do a little bit of a warm up. I call this, this little cry a, a circle of life here. So bring your hands in front of your heart. And then as you inhale, lift your arms up towards the ceiling. Maybe follow your thumbs with your gaze. And then as you exhale, sweep your arms down in a big sweeping circle behind you and see if you can clasp your hands behind you and see if you can roll your shoulder back and lengthen your arms and maybe a little bit of a baby back bend. So you kind of gaze up towards the ceiling, lift your chest here. And then exhale, bring your hands back to heart center. We'll do this, we'll do this a few more times. So inhale, arms go up, exhale, they go back behind you. And it's okay if they don't, if your hands don't clasp, just lengthen your hands out, inhale and a mini back bend here, and then exhale, bring your arms and hands back to center. And then maybe a few more cycles of this. I'll do this, I'll do this one more time. Arms go up, inhale, arms come around, exhale. Inhale this mini back bend here. And then exhale. Hands come to heart center. Maybe stay for a couple of centering breaths. And then we'll move into our first yin posture. And the first yin posture is Sphinx pose. So you'll come out of your seated position. And if you were seated on your heels the whole time, this might feel good to lengthen your legs up. So for Sphinx, we'll come to lying on our bellies with the legs comfortably extended out behind you, a comfortable distance apart. So whatever that is for you, heels can be in or out. You experiment, find, find the, the most accessible position for you. So you might have to experiment here. And then draw your elbows underneath your torso. Shoulder width apart. And the shoulder width apart cue is meant to Find that place where you stack your forearms, where there's the least amount of muscle engagement. So this is very characteristic of a yin practice, is we're trying to bone stack to minimize muscle engagement, to, to give the muscles a rest, so that if there's any stresses or pressures in the postures, they're soaking into the connective tissues, which are collectively known as yin tissues. This is why it's called a yin practice here. And you can just stay here in Sphinx. Torso is soft, so you relax the muscle fiber in your torso, and you're letting your spine sag from your shoulders to the ground. It's taking, it's, it's kind of taking the pressures of the posture. You don't want this to be injurious or traumatic. In other words, painful. You want, you maybe want to feel your spine lightly compress. That is the point to sphinx, but not so much that it's, that it's, that's painful. In fact, since this sequence is more restorative in nature, you might be, want to take an attitude where you can barely feel that compression, but you know it's there. You know it's there back in your lumbar here. So if this is too much in Sphinx, you can always take props. I've got grab a couple pillows, release your arms and just put your upper torso underneath the pillows so that you're in a mini back bend. Maybe two pillows is too much. So today it's going to be just one pillow for you here. Or you can come back into traditional sphinx if you wish. We're going to be here for a few minutes because this is, this is, this is part of practice is staying for a while. By the way, notice what your head and your neck is up to. You can hold your head up, but remember that takes muscle engagement. You can let your head hang. For some of us that feels good. For some of us it doesn't. So then you take some sort of support. I've got a yoga block here and you can just gently rest your head on the block so that it has some support so you don't have to hold it up 
nor does it have to hang in a painful way. And you can focus on that very light sensation, that compression in your lumbar and your, sac and your sacrum here. So I'd like to get back to a little bit of the fundamentals, the fundamental ideas of yin. And that is we're trying to relax the muscle fiber, which is considered a yang tissue. So muscle cells are considered yang. We kind of look at things in a yin practice in terms of yin and yang. Muscle cells are active, and so they're considered yang cells. Um, the supporting structures, the connective tissues, are considered yin. And that's what we're trying to exercise in these yin practices. And so we do that more effectively with the muscles rest, with the muscle cells resting. And we do that with a light, some sort of light pressure and for a long period of time. So in Sphinx, this is, this is maybe straightforward in that we're lightly compressing, compressing the connective tissue system that exists in our spine here. And we're finding, finding that point. And we find that point through feeling rather than what it looks like. So if, the sh if you're trying to mimic my shape and it's painful, then that's, that's not the point to practice. You need to ease off of your back bend a bit. If you're mimicking my shape and you feel nothing, that's actually okay in a restorative practice. So it's okay to do that for this practice. If you want to activate and engage the connective tissues, then you want to move to a point where you're actually feeling something. We'll go for about another minute here in Sphinx. Give yourself permission and allow yourself to come out of a posture early if it's getting too painful or if it's getting too traumatic for you for any reason. So one minute, two minutes, very good time to spend in posture. So you don't have to stay the whole time. Um, you can, if you're not feeling any, you can actually stay longer. If you're really loving Sphinx and you'd actually like to spend 10 minutes here, then, then just ignore the video or pause it. Yeah. Otherwise, that, well, we'll try about three more breaths here instincts and see if you can come back to this idea of allowing your body to soften and relax this will this will release the tonus in your muscle cells so that you can come to an idea of this this quiet contemplation of your stopping points your the pressures and the traction of the posture here one more breath And then to come out of Sphinx, you can slowly lower yourself down to the ground. This creates a more neutral spine. You can take your hands and rest your head on your hands. Turn your head to one side. You can stay here. The next yin posture we're moving into is actually a nice hip opening counter pose to Sphinx. So you can either do this without any props. And that is to bend one knee and drag that knee, that thigh, up alongside, kind of parallel to the hip here. I'm calling this kind of a prone half frog pose, although I'm not sure if it really does have any kind of formal name to it here. So the other leg, this other leg is extended, and then you can just kind of rest here for a moment. Now, if this is comfortable, just right on the floor, you can stay here. If it's, if you're thinking you would like a little bit of extra padding underneath pressure points, then by all means, come out, gather them up, and then come back into this posture. And that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll demonstrate with a yoga bolster here first. So maybe that knee would like a little bit of padding instead of being on the cold, hard floor. So I can move that blanket over here and I'm grabbing this yoga bolster. And now I come back into this posture. So I'm lying prone on the nice yoga bolster, drag that knee up alongside and it doesn't really matter what the angle of your lower leg is here. 
and then other legs extended and then find something comfortable for your head and your arms and just allow yourself to sink into this posture here and soften settle kind of get in touch with your breath get in touch with yeah, there's some other things that you're feeling, maybe the temperature of the room, maybe get in touch with the noises around you, maybe maybe the, the mental state up here. And just give yourself a chance to reside here. So again, we'll stay here. We'll stay here for a couple more minutes. So to set ourselves up for this practice, there's three basic principles. The first principle is called finding your edge. Since this is the most more restorative practice, you want to find an edge that's very perceptible. That sounds easy, but I think in actuality it's hard because a lot of us in our young lifestyles are used to very, very dramatic sensations. We're not going for dramatic sensations in this, in this practice. We're going for subtle sensations, which means we really need to pay attention. We really need to focus to see if we can actually feel those subtle textures of feeling of pressure, of traction in these postures, which in my opinion, makes it, makes it a more advanced practice because you have to maintain the mental focus. This is why it's a form of meditation here. And do find the shape that accommodates your body the best, which may not look anything like what I am doing. You might have to make adjustments. You can come out of a posture. So the time spent in a posture is part of the part of the posture, part of the practice, part of the props. And so if you need more props, get them. If you need fewer props, get them. If you need to come out and do something else for a while, do that. But the second principle is trying to remain still. This can be challenging because we can think of all kinds of reasons why we need to get up and do something else for a while. And the usefulness of yin is actually staying, staying in place for as long as is accessible and appropriate for you. And that will be different for each one of us. Third principle is time, which I touched on is like, now you cultivate patience to just stay and soften and sink. Feel, feel the floor. Feel any soft padding that you're using. So just a couple more breaths here on this side of half frog. And then we'll have the other side to do. This is a slow moving practice. So when you start coming out of this posture, you can be as slow and deliberate as you need to be. And you can make any little movements that you would like to make to make this a little bit, a little bit kinder and gentler here. So I'm going to move my blanket over to this side for the other knee. And, and instead of bolsters, maybe you don't have any other bolster, but you still like something soft underneath your torso. So maybe you have to go run and grab a few blank uh, pillows off of your, off of your bed get those and then place them where your head and your torso are going to be. And then same procedure, just lie on with your torso on the pillows, your legs maybe off, and then bend the other knee and drag it up alongside. Oops, come back up. Drag it up alongside your torso. And then if your head was one way during the first posture, see if you can turn your head the other way. And then stay here after you've made appropriate adjustments and modifications to this posture. But again, this is not meant to be a dramatic posture. This is meant to be more of a restorative feeling posture. So the idea is the usefulness in this posture is feeling, feeling supported so that your muscles don't have to support you. And you can really just soften, settle, and relax. So we use the ideas of yin and yang, contrasting polarities, to kind of discuss the different, different 
mind states, emotional states, but also physical tissues in the body. So the body, the human body is not a simple thing. It's made up of very, very complicated systems and it doesn't do the body justice to oversimplify it. In our very young culture, in young thinking, we tend to often just think of the body as muscle cells. But of course, we know when we think about it that that can't be true. If we really were just muscle cells, we'd be this quivering blob of muscle cells with absolutely no structure. And one of the things that the connective tissue system provides, the yin system, is this support structure. So bones, bones are part of connective tissue system. They're the, more, the most obvious things that create structure in our body. Something, something for the muscle cells to actually move around. These bones and muscles are connected to each other through a vast system of collagen fibers and materials, ligaments, tendons, and fascia that keep everything in place and continue. In fact, they're, they're a critical part. They're, they're as critical as the bone system. You can't have a human without bones, but you can't have a human without fascia or ligaments either. The bones wouldn't hold together. So all of this creates this generalized system of connective tissue, and we call it, we call it yin tissue. We're trying, we try to describe the gross properties of yin tissues versus yang tissues. In other words, what's, what's similar and what's different between a muscle cell and a ligament? And so one, one term that we use to describe them colloquially is plastic and elastic, two yin and yang concepts. And our informal definition, this is very dependent on our informal definition of, of plastic and elastic. And to a certain degree it works. So our informal definition of elastic is, is often how far something can stretch. That's, that's our definition of elastic, like a rubber band. We consider a rubber band elastic because we can stretch it very, very, very far. And so we apply that to muscle cells because you can indeed stretch muscle cells three times their length before they burst. So very, they're very, very stretchy, muscle cells are. Connective tissue, not so much. I'm kind of done with this side of half frog. So when you're ready, start moving arms, use the muscles in your arms now to slowly move yourself up and out of this posture here. And maybe wiggle around a little bit to work out some kinks here. The next posture that's, that's, that is a, is a posture known as banana pose here. And so what we'll do is clear our mat of props for the moment. If you have some sort of soft weight, like a sandbag, maybe, maybe gather that up or not. You don't really need it for banana pose, but it can be a helpful prop. And we'll come to lying prone or lying supine, lying on our backs here for, for banana. Legs extended out long. Banana pose is a full body lateral bend. We're trying to just kind of create space and open up either through one side of the body or the other side. This, this time I'm gonna open up through the left side first, which means I'm gonna move everything over to the right here. Since I want the, the stuckness in the, the left side of my body, I kind of want to keep my hips flat or low to the ground and I use the weight the sandbag to, and I, I place it gently on my left hip to kind of psychologically remind myself to keep that left hip close to the ground here. And then with 
start inching my extended legs over to the right side, just as far as they go until they don't go anymore. That's all I need to do. And then inch the torso the same way. So maybe I use my arms here a little bit. And if you notice, I'm making this bent shape here, crescent moon shape, this banana shape here. So this is, this is essentially banana pose. This is where you can stay. Now you can experiment with different forms of banana pose. You can cross your legs, see how that feels. You can extend your arms overhead, maybe clasp the left arm with the right hand and kind of pull on it lightly to get an extra stretch going on through the shoulders and the left arm. Maybe your head and neck are kinked, so unkink them. They're not meant to be a part of a stressful part of the um, posture. You can even kind of stick a pillow underneath your head if you would like a pillow here. So in other words, kind of just find your version of banana pose. And it doesn't matter if you're not feeling much in this left side, you're just trying to open it up. So you're just going to, you really are just going to kind of your very light stopping point here. And then here you stay for a few minutes here on this side. So in a very informal, in colloquial way, as I was explaining earlier, we like to use the terms elastic and plastic to, to describe the differences, but it's dependent on a very informal definition of elastic. We say muscle cells are elastic because we can stretch them different, stretch them very, very far, three times their length, whereas connective tissue doesn't really, doesn't seem to stretch very much. So it's, it's much less pliant than muscle cells. And so we say the connective tissue is plastic, like a credit, plastic, like the plastic made in a credit card. You can kind of bend it a little bit, but you can't really bend it a lot. You can't, you can't pull on it and it, it doesn't, it doesn't stretch out very much. But here's the problem with this description is the technical definition, the engineering, the scientific definition of elasticity or elastic has nothing to do with the amount with elongation. It has more to do with rebound. So the scientific and technical definition of elasticity is, is a property about how much a material deforms and how efficiently it stores the energy of that deformation. And then when it rebounds, it restores itself to its original shape efficiently using that energy. So that's, that's the real definition of elastic. So if we, if we actually use that definition, then our whole idea about connective tissue and, and muscle cells actually come has, has to actually be reversed. Turns out connective tissue is much more elastic than muscle cell fibers are. So have about one more minute on this side of banana. If that's okay, if you're not feeling, you're kind of feeling like you're getting hurt, then Time to come out of an hour, but if this is feeling okay for you, then maybe stay here for a few more breaths. So in other words, maybe elastic, calling muscle cells elastic and, and connective tissue not elastic is maybe not appropriate because when we apply the technical dis definition, it turns out connective tissue is much more elastic than muscle cells. This maybe doesn't make much sense to us. So uh, an analogy is a steel ball and a rubber ball. So visualize a steel ball and a rubber ball, both the same amount of material, i.e. kind of both the same weight here, and you drop them onto an extremely hard, I would say perfectly hard floor, and watch them bounce. Turns out the steel ball will bounce higher 
than the rubber ball, even though we might claim that the rubber ball is more elastic. It's actually the reverse. The steel ball is more elastic, and any engineer will confirm that that is the case. Steel balls are much more elastic because when they hit the hard floor, both of them will deform the steel ball much less than the rubber ball, but the steel much, ball is much better at storing and rebounding that energy and restoring its form, which is why it bounces higher. The rubber ball deforms more, but it loses a lot of the stored energy as heat, and it doesn't bounce back as far. So that's a good example of something that starts out as counterintuitive, but then it makes sense the more you think about it. And it's the same way with our tissues. So connective tissues are much more better at storing energy and rebounding to their original position than muscle cells. Muscle cells you can stretch to a longer length, but that's not the real definition of elasticity. And so muscle cells don't snap back quite as well as, as, as ligaments, as, as connective tissue we can start to come out of the side of banana pose. Do it slowly. Maybe take off the weight if you're using a weight. Spend a little time to just notice if there was some rebound to this posture, some reverberation, and you'll notice it through feeling it, and maybe it feels achy here. I like to do a little bit of a forward bend after each side of banana pose. So that forward bend takes, for me, takes the form of just hugging my knees into my chest here. And then I'll go ahead and when you're ready, you can lengthen up. We'll get set up for the other side of banana pose. So hips start out flat. And if you like the weight, again, you don't have to use the weight, but if it makes you feel a little bit more stable, then you can use the weight. Legs go to the other side, so now they're going to the left. I'm opening up through my right side. Inch my torso over to the left as well until I'm in this crescent moon shape on this side here. And then here we stay for a few more minutes on this side. So what we might like to do is come up with some descriptive terms that are a little bit more accurate than elastic and plastic to describe the, the gross general properties of muscle cells versus connective tissue, such as, such as ligaments here. And maybe a more accurate comparison or yin and yang term might be compliant for muscles and stiff for connective tissue because that that's really what they feel like when we run up against the 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 very very stiff properties of connective tissue when we when we run up against our stopping point in a yin posture or a yoga posture it's often can be muscle cells but it's often connective tissue that's creating that feeling of stiffness because that's the property of connective tissue. It's, it's very unyielding, even though it's very good at storing your energy and rebounding that energy. Whereas muscle cells, much, much more compliant. Compliant being you can manipulate the muscle cells into different shapes. Indeed, you can elongate them and then you can contract them, which is, which is an element of compliance. So those might actually be better terms, stiff and for, for yin tissue, connective tissue, ligaments, bones, and compliant for the much more active and dynamic properties of a muscle cell here. So 
We'll stay here for about five more breaths on this side of banana pose. By the way, you can always go deeper or less deep into a posture. Um, again, since this is a more restorative attitude during this practice, if maybe staying put is actually a better idea. If this was a more the kind of intense practice, then you might think about moving deeper if you've lost sensation, but maybe not this time around. So a couple more breaths here. When you're feeling ready, maybe start slowly releasing, inching yourself back to center. When you get back to center, if you, if you were using some sort of weight, place the weight off to the side. And then again, do a little bit of rebounding here. Now you can just stay still and notice the effect of just that simple shape held for several minutes. You can do some sort of activity. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe waterfall pose feels good. Maybe you can do a light hip opener, like reclined windshield wipers. Again, I like, I like just hugging my knees into my chest and feeling, feeling my lumbar extend along the floor here. The next in posture is cattail pose. We've got two sides to do this. So the best way to approach cattail pose is in stages and then stop at the stage that feels best for you here. So for cattail, we start both legs extended on the ground and then raise the right leg up towards the ceiling just as far as it goes to, till it stops. And then lower the right leg over to the opposite side, to the left side, until it reaches the floor. Inch yourself onto your left side. So you have to maybe take your left arm to prop your head up with your forearm here. This is kind of the first stages of cattail pose. If you're like in this shape, this is stage one. You stay here in stage one. Stage two is bend the bottom knee. So that bottom left knee, see if you can reach back with your right arm and find that left foot in a bind here. Maybe, maybe you're close, but you can't quite reach it. And you would like, you would like to reach it. Well, you can extend your hand with a towel or with a belt or with a yoga strap, wrap it around that foot and then you can actually reach that foot with something here or you don't have to get the foot clasped you can just kind of let it stay released here so this is this is stage number two for cattail stage number three is release this right shoulder back towards the right so you're kind of rolling your upper torso your shoulders back towards the right as far as they go. And maybe that right shoulder makes it to the ground. Maybe it doesn't. Usually where it stops is the natural stopping point for most of us. And then release your head and your neck. Maybe it makes it to the floor. Maybe it's not making to the floor and that's really uncomfortable. So that's where you grab, that's where you grab a pillow here. This is the great thing about doing yoga at home is if you don't have a prop available, maybe you can run around your house and find something that can use, maybe another blanket, or maybe even just a piece of clothing, like a rolled up t-shirt here. And then we'll stay here a couple more minutes in cattail pose. So stiff and compliant, in, stiff, the term stiff for, for yin tissue and compliant for yang tissue, kind of keep, keep with this theme of yin and yang. Um, compliant muscle cells are yang tissues. Compliant is actually a yang concept. Stiff is actually a yin concept. So, so we've, we haven't parted ways with these con this idea of contrasting polarities. We're, we're trying to keep the yang system healthy. We exercise it in a yang way, in a very dynamic way, so that we can keep these compliant tissues healthy. Same with yin is we're trying to exercise these stiff tissues and keep them healthy. 
that might mean we keep them um, so we're working with something that's inherently stiff we're feeling that so we're in this yin practice we're trying to actually feel and reside with this feeling of stiffness now in our very young culture oftentimes stiff has negative connotations to it which is unfortunate because the world is not just yang the world is a balance of yin and yang and so it can be very useful to us to approach to recognize to reside with and even to honor the stiff aspect of our lives and that's that's very apparent in a yin practice because and that's the challenging part is we're coming to our our stopping point in a yin practice we're feeling that stiffness and normally we don't like to feel stiff and so we kind of interpret that as awkward and uncomfortable situation it's like i'm feeling stiff i don't want to feel stiff and the idea is yeah in a yin practice you actually do want to feel stiff you want to feel that stiffness that stopping point that's where the magic happens that's where you get the benefits out of practice out of this practice is when you reach and acknowledge that stiff point oh challenging that's a challenging mental concept to want to do that and it's pretty much precisely what we're doing is is for time we're saying it's okay it's okay to be with that stiffness it's it's an important part of health and of being alive here maybe just one more breath on this side and then we can start coming out of your version of cattail so if you have the lower leg lower foot clasp maybe release that first maybe bend the upper leg break it alongside the lower leg and then slowly roll yourself all the way back onto your back here when you get there you might have to do a little bit of motion to work out the reverberations of that side of cattail and at some point you'll start to kind of realign yourself along the mat here legs extended to get set up for the other side of cattail when you're ready let left leg extended left leg and by the way it doesn't have to be perfectly straight it just needs to be extended whatever that means for you and then lower the left leg over to the right and then inch yourself onto your right side you can stay here in stage number one you can bend the bottom leg reach back with the left arm see if you can find the foot in the class that's stage two stage three is to melt the left shoulder all the way back as far as it goes until it reaches the floor notice my left shoulder is not on the floor today this is this is how far my my torso wants to go today so i'm quite accepting of that and then we'll stay here for maybe get some comfy props if there's some sharp pressure points like it's bolsters all good stuff here we'll stay here for a few more minutes in in our young world we like to run we like to be active and run and we we don't like to be feel stiff which is why yin yin can be very challenging practice it feels very uncomfortable because we have spent our whole culture our whole lives our whole mindset running away from stiffness and so when a practice calls you to actually feel your stiffness is like why would i ever want to do that and the idea is is because when you do that you're exercising a very critical system of the body and you're ex exercising you're exercising mental focus these are getting to what bring the physical benefits to such a slow practice like this indeed indeed we're residing with our stiffness and that's why that's why it's a relative word I and mean, maybe a more accurate word stiff in 
two more accurate words in describing these tissues that we work with in yoga practice, in exercise here. Maybe, maybe we have our yang practices of power yoga or running. Maybe we have our, or even walking. We have our yin practices of restorative postures or maybe things a little bit more intense like dragon pose. But the idea is to reside. And the idea of this practice is to not have to reside at an extreme stiffness. We're not trying to create extreme sensations of stiffness. We're trying to find a little bit more subtle sensations and giving ourselves permission to stay there. So maybe about five more slow, deep breaths on this side of cattail. And then when you're ready to come out of cattail, slowly come out, deliberately, gently come out of cattail. Release yourself back to the floor. And then maybe that was a back, among other things, cattail is a back bend and a twist. And so you might want to do some forward bends or maybe some gentle hip openers again to kind of release the tension out of cattail. At some point, make your way up to seated. And we'll get set up for next in posture known as reclined butterfly pose. Now, you can use as many or as few props as you need to in any yoga practice. Um, the props I'm going to suggest are something where you can make a wrap. Now, if you don't have a yoga bolster, then maybe make a pile of pillows, maybe and blankets here, but I'm going, today I'm going to use a block and then a yoga bolster on the block just to create a little bit of a ramp here. Also, I'm going to use a very long blanket roll. So I've taken one of the blankets and I've rolled it up so that it's a fairly long roll, blanket roll. And I'll show you in a moment just what I'm planning to do with this. So if you have a little bit of padding to lie back on, so this is to lie back on. You sit with the back side of your hips up against your padding, be it a bolster or maybe some pillows or maybe nothing at all. Maybe you just want to just lie on the floor. Then you make butterfly legs. So you start out with legs extended. Bend your knees, bring your feet together, lower your knees up to either side. Now again, you don't need any props here, but if you would like this big long blanket roll, take the blanket roll, place the middle lip on the top of your feet, and then wrap the blanket roll, rest of the blanket roll underneath your shins or your ankles here. And this creates kind of an automatic system of support for your legs here. And then you just lower yourself back all the way to the floor or on some pillows or on a bolster like I'm doing here. Heels can be as far out or close into your hips as you want them to be. Remember, this is a restorative sequence. So we're just wanting support. We're wanting the support of the floor and of props here so that we can completely release the muscle cell fiber and allow ourselves to just re reside in the stillness of the posture. So a couple minutes here in this pose. Come back to these ideas of softening. And in yoga, yoga, our breath is kind of an important anchor 
in this idea of softness. So when you feel the cycling of your breath, as you take those gentle inhales and exhale, the inhale is the expanding part of the breath. You're feeling the energy of the inhale expand through the whole area of your body. So down into your legs, up into your head and your arms. And then as you exhale, the exhale is the releasing, the restorative, the softening, the yin cycle of the breath, where you cultivate that deep sense of yogic surrender and allow yourself to not worry about the past or the future. You're focusing your mental state on the present moment, on each breath, on the subtle sensations that you're experiencing right now. You're, you're setting that as highest priority. It's like right now, what needs my focus and my priority is this very moment. And that's the meditation. That's the concentration in pretty much any yoga practice. It's just the, the emphasis is different. In this practice, the emphasis is the stillness and the softening of the muscles. A couple more soft breaths here and then when you're slowly getting ready to come out of this pose maybe maybe make little motions with arms and with legs and then slowly bring your knees back up to center maybe roll over on gently onto one side and bring yourself all the way back up to seated and then from here, if you were using a lot of props, maybe remove them for the moment because we're moving back right back onto our backs here. This time with a nice neutral spine. So a little bit of integration before we take our final restorative posture, the ultimate yin posture, which is Shavasana. Maybe we'll do a little bit of, of sacral rolling here. Bend your, both of your knees, draw them into your chest. You can take your hands, Grab your knees and kind of pull them in here. If you feel like your sits, you feel like your tailbone's lifting way up off of the floor, kind of ease off on pulling in your knees. And then draw both of them together over to one side and then out away from each other and over to the other side and back in towards your torso. And make a few more of those circles with the knees. Now, as you're doing this, you want to draw your attention to your low back. And just notice how you're changing the pressure around your low, low back sacral area here. You're kind of making, you're kind of making a massage circle between your low back and the floor. And then at some point change directions, go the other way and take note of that pressure that you're creating. And then at some point, bring your knees back in. Maybe give your knees a nice big hug. And you can hug them in front of the shins. Maybe that's painful. So you can always hug your legs in from underneath your thighs here. And then from here, move into your final resting posture. Something that feels stable and supported. Something that feels safe. Something that feels comfortable. 
So maybe it's just lying on the floor, arms and legs extended. Maybe you have to get a few props to make this feel more accessible. Maybe, maybe it'd feel good to have the knees slightly bent and slightly apart. So something like a blanket roll or a bolster underneath the knees. And then this is where we come back to just take a moment to notice your breath notice your surroundings and then begin to soften your face it's okay you can close your eyes here soften your jaw release your tongue soften the entire inside of your mouth release the skin around the outside of your mouth soften soften each cheek left cheek and right cheek Release tension in your chin and your nose, the sides of your head. So soften the skin around your right ear and your left ear. Soften the muscles around your eye sockets. So soften the muscles around your right eye and the muscles around your left eye. Soften that space in between your eyes, the third eye. And soften your forehead and your temples. Notice, notice if you discover tension in your, anywhere in your face. Notice if it won't release. Give it permission to not release if it won't on its own. Maybe it needs to be there. And once you acknowledge that need, maybe it decides, okay, it can actually relax. Soften the crown of your head, release your brain. Allow your thoughts to just be thoughts. Allow them to just float. Float randomly in. They'll float through your brain. They'll float randomly out like clouds in a clear blue sky. Postpone being a human doing. Give yourself the power to be a human being. You have nowhere to go. You have nothing to do. All that's going on right now is you're noticing your breath and you're allowing yourself to simply exist, to simply be. Soften down through your collarbones, your shoulders, the shoulder blades. Relax your right arm, right palm, right fingers. Left arm, left palm, and left fingers. Bring your attention to the tip of each finger on each hand, left and right, and see if you can notice your energy there, that light sense of prana tingling in each, each one of the fingertips. Soften the rest of your torso. Rib cage is releasing. Abdomen is softening. Hips are relaxing. Thighs and knees Release shins, calves, ankles, soft. Heels, the soles and the tops of both of your feet softening. And relax your toes, both feet. See if you can notice the tip of each toe on each foot and see if you can notice that light sense of energy, that life force that manifestation of you, clear down there, the tip of each toe, each foot, left and right. Release, relax, and surrender your body-mind 100%. And visualize yourself lying on that sandy beach, on a tropical island next to the ocean, on a sunny, warm day. 
and you're feeling the warm support of the soft sand underneath you. You can feel the warmth of the sunbeams softening your skin. And you can hear the, soul, the slow roll of the ocean surf as it comes in and moves back out. And you notice that the whole ocean surf is moving in perfect harmony with your own breath. So every time you inhale, you can hear the ocean surf rolling in. And every time you exhale, the ocean surf quietly rolls out. to deepen your breath and bring your thoughts back into the room. You can start to make little motions with fingers and with toes. Expand that motion into wrists and into ankles. Make little movements with arms and legs. Maybe gently rock your head from side to side. When you feel ready, gently bend your knees, roll over onto one side, and stay there long enough to cultivate a deep sense of gratitude for your practice, but most importantly for yourself, for your unique manifestation in this universe. This universe is ecstatically joyful that you are here. And then when you're feeling ready, bring yourself up, come into a comfortable seat. When you get there, bring your hands together in front of heart center. So I'll end practice with an OM. You can either listen or sim or join in. Namaste.